In this video, we're going to make a Game Boy Color game from scratch using GB Studio. We're not going to write a single line of code. If it all works out, we'll be able to play the game on my analog pocket by the end of this video. With all the hype around Dragon Ball Daima and Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, I thought it would be fun to make my own little Dragon Ball game for Game Boy Color. Here's the backstory. Vegeta has killed Chi Chi. Goku must defeat the Cybermen army to collect all seven Dragon Balls so he can summon Shenron and resuscitate her. Welcome to GB Studio. GB Studio is a game editor like Unity, but just for creating Game Boy Color games. As you can see here on the left, we have scenes, we have prefabs, this is an area for scripts, and we have global variables down here. And then on the right is where we see the details and properties for actors, scenes, and scripts. I created all the pixel art by hand using Procreate for iPad with my Apple Pencil. Goku is a 32 pixel by 32 pixel sprite. All sprites are broken down into 8 by 16 pixel tiles. We can only have 96 sprite tiles in a scene and there can only be 10 sprite tiles in a row. A Game Boy Color game can use 8 different color palettes for sprites and 8 for backgrounds. I drew all the background images as well as the sprite sheets for Goku, the Cybermen, the Dragon Balls, the health bar, and the other status indicators. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene for the logo screen and select the background image. I'm going to set the color palette for the background to be sky. Then I created the game's title screen. I named this game Shenron. Next we'll create the scene for the first level of the game. We'll set the color palette to also be sky, and we'll use the simple sky parallax background image which is 4 times the width of the screen. The Game Boy Color screen was just 144 pixels wide by 160 pixels tall. The final scene here is going to be where we reach Shenron after collecting the 7 Dragon Balls. We're going to create a scene like this for each level with a different Dragon Ball in it. We can animate Goku by selecting and adding animation frames from the sprite sheet. Here are the different animation states. The engine will switch between the different directional poses to make Goku fly. The goal of the game is going to be to fly around to kill the Cybermen and collect the Dragon Balls at the end of each level. Let's add a Cybermen. As you can see here in the emulator, Goku can fly up and down, left and right using the different directional sprites. For the game UI, I've added status indicators to the scene. We'll need to disable animation on these actors and hook up the game logic to update the animation frame based on the status change. Next, let's create Goku's main attack, a one-handed key blast. First, we'll create a new script which will attach to the on and it event of the player. In the script, we'll start by playing a sound effect for the attack, then we'll add a launch projectile event. We'll select the spirit ball sprite in the attack state. We'll set the speed of the projectile to 3 and the animation speed to 7.5 frames per second. The lifetime will be 1.2. We'll set the collision group to 1. Then we'll set the animation state of the player to attack. We wait for 0.3 seconds. Then we reset the player's animation state back to default. The projectile should launch from the position of Goku's hand so we'll update the Y offset to 10 and the directional offset to 14. Oh and we have to wrap this whole set of events in a button press event. So when the A button is pressed, we'll launch the projectile. Now we'll just select our player in the scene and add a call script event to call the key blast script on init. And just like that, Goku can fire a key blast when we press the A button. When the key blast collides with the enemy, it should cause damage. In the on hit callback, we'll set the animation state of the Cyberman to hit. That'll switch the color palette to show damage. Let's wait for 0.1 seconds. We'll use a local variable for the hit count and increment that. If the enemy gets hit 3 times, it dies. We'll do a conditional check if the variable is equal to value to check if the hit count is 3, then we'll play a sound effect for the kill. Then we can change the animation state to destroy. We run that once, no need to loop. Then we're going to wait a bit and we're going to hide the actor. Deactivate the actor and disable collisions. And we'll increment the global variable for enemies killed. Here we'll set the animation frame of the kill counter based on the enemy's killed global variable. So that way it'll update when we kill a Cyberman. Now back in the Cyberman on hit, if the hit count isn't 3, we'll just set the animation state back to default. We'll also increase the animation speed of the destroy animation so it happens faster. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that looks good. Goku can also take damage. Let's create a new script for player damage. What happens when the player gets damaged is similar, but we'll make it a bit different. First we'll play a damage sound effect, the same one as before, sound effect at index 7. Then instead of changing colors like the Cybermen, we'll hide the player and we'll wait like 0.1 seconds, very quick. Then we show the player. That'll make the player sprite blink to show damage. 
Then we'll check to see if the game is over using a conditional to verify the global player damage variable. If player damage is 7, that's the maximum amount of animation frames for the health bar over here. If that's the case, we'll show the game over dialog. We'll hide all sprites, then we'll show the dialog, game over, you died. Oh, and then we'll navigate to the title screen. So we'll do a scene change. Otherwise, we'll just change the animation frame of the status bar. We'll just create a variable here for the health bar so we can pass it into the script. Then the animation frame will be set to the global variable for player damage. I think that should work. Now let's connect the script to the player. On hit, we call script, select the player damage script and set the reference to the health bar in the scene. One more thing. I forgot to increment the player damage variable on hit. So we increment player damage, then check if the game is over, otherwise change the animation frame of the health bar. So he takes damage, I take damage, it's updated in the health bar. More damage, last one, game over you died. Then we go back to the title screen. Next we'll create a script for collecting the Dragon Balls at the end of the level. We'll attach the script in the Dragon Ball on interact event. What we're going to do in this script is first play a sound effect. Then we're going to hide all the status UI elements. I haven't figured out a way to group elements and hide them together, so I'll manually add references to the UI actors and hide them one by one. Then we'll set the UI element references in the Dragon Ball call script event. So we hide all the UI elements, then we're going to deactivate the Dragon Ball. Let's add another script parameter for the Dragon Ball. Then we display a dialog. You've got the Dragon Ball Collected star Dragon Ball. This is using the global variable Dragon Ball Collected. We'll increment that variable before showing the dialog, so then it should show one star for the first level. Then in the Dragon Ball Collected status indicator, we'll init the Dragon Ball Collected variable to zero. Back in the Collect Dragon Ball script, we can show the hidden UI again after we return from the dialog. Let me just name these parameters so it's easier to understand. Now in the Dragon Ball counters on update, we'll set the animation frame of the digit sprite sheet to the variable Dragon Ball Collected. Then we should see the counter update when we collect the Dragon Ball. Then back in the Collect Dragon Ball script, we can hide the Dragon Ball showing that we've collected it. Okay, let's test this out. You've got the one star Dragon Ball and the Dragon Ball counter updated correctly. Let's create our first level. First we'll convert the Cyberman to a prefab so we can reuse them in the scene. Then we'll just copy and paste to duplicate them. Now we have multiple enemies in the level. And that's what every level is pretty much going to be. We'll just change the design of the background for some of the levels, and each level is going to have a different Dragon Ball. We'll have to defeat all the Cybermen in the level to get to the end and collect the Dragon Ball. Let's add a trigger at the top right corner and make it the height of the scene. In the on enter event of the trigger, we'll change the scene to the next level. The Cybermen need to hunt Goku. So in the Cybermen on update, we'll add a move to event, and it's going to move to a property which will be the position of the player. We're going to apply this change to the prefab so it'll update for every Cyberman in the scene. <laughs> okay, that's way too fast. Okay, let's slow him down. Uh, we'll change not the animation speed, but the movement speed and we'll set it to half. As you can see, they're fast, but I'm faster. So the Cybermen will try to hunt me. When they touch the player, he'll take damage. Then I'll capture the one star Dragon Ball, and as we enter the trigger, it'll take us to the next level. Which for now is where we summon Shenron. Yeah, I think I'll disable the player here. Okay, so I've added the seven levels and polished the game a bit. As you can see, we've got different color palettes and mountains in some levels. The first six levels will bring you to the next Dragon Ball level, and then the last level when you've collected all the Dragon Balls will take you to Shenron, and that's the end of the game. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. Trying this game on my analog pocket, which is a modern Game Boy that plays original cartridges. This is legit crazy that I'm actually able to play this now. I actually made a Game Boy Color game from scratch. Okay, let's capture the Dragon Balls real quick. Rise, Shenron. Thanks for rocking with me till the end. Let me know what I should add to the game in the comments. And don't forget to key blast that like button and hit that subscribe for more. Peace.